<laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I have just briefed uh, members of the UN Security Council about the situation in West Africa and the Sahel. West Africa and the Sahel have recently witnessed positive progress in democratic consolidation. However, the security situation remains of great concern. Traditional and new drivers of conflict and insecurity are hampering the capacity of countries to improve life conditions and strengthen human security. Clashes between farmers and herders are another threat. If not contained, they have the potential to undermine peace and stability in the region. The impact of the instability in northern Mali on Burkina Faso and Mali and the persistent Boko Haram attacks in the Lake Chad Basin area are causing huge suffering to the populations. Up to 5.2 million people, many of whom have been displaced across the Lake Chad Basin area, are struggling for their subsistence. While it is vital to continue to tackle security threats, the international community must remain engaged to help the governments set the foundations for democratic cohesion and resilient societies and to provide support for sustainable and inclusive development. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, recently, about five days ago, there were reports of uh, attacks on uh, Nigerians, allegedly by Cameroonians, around the, the Bakasi Peninsula. And there uh, have also been uh, reports of uh, uh, forceful ejection of some Nigerian refugees in Cameroon. Uh, what is uh, you know, uh, you know, doing you know, to intervene in all these uh, issues? Uh, this is uh, an issue that is uh, of uh, extreme interest to us, as you know, um, you know us and in my leadership, we chair the CNMC, the Joint Nigeria Cameroon Mixed Commission. So these are issues that are of interest to us. As I speak to you now, uh, a team from my office has just left Abuja, where they have been consulting with officials, particularly the Minister of Justice. Attorney General's office. They have continued to Cameroon, they are in Yaoundé uh, today. Uh, so uh, we will look into this and other concerns. Um, for now, the information we have is that the issue had to do with uh, an imposition of a new tax, uh, fishing tax in communities. And this may have generated some friction between uh, the different fishermen, including Nigerian fishermen, and tax officials. So uh, just to say that uh, this uh, really was not related directly to the border demarcation issues, uh, but had more to do with the tax, a new tax that has been imposed by Cameroonian authorities. The refugees. Well, um, we are looking at the, uh, the, the, the issue, UNHCR, as you know, uh, handles question of refugees. So definitely they, they will be already on the ground to ascertain uh, even the flow, the numbers. Uh, but let me commend the initiative of the Vice President uh, of Nigeria, uh, Professor Simbanjo, uh, who has already directed that both the NEMA and the state level, NEMA, SEMA, that's the National Emergency Action Authority of Nigeria, and the Cross River uh, State Emergency Authority to uh, look into what numbers uh, are being displaced from Nigeria as a result of this, and to provide the necessary support uh, these uh, newly displaced persons may need. 
we, we commend that effort on the part of Nigerian authorities. Uh, well, sorry. What, what did you discuss about the uh, new developments of the G5 in the closed session? Uh, when will it start? Who is going to continue to fund it? Uh, and is the G5 force going to be tasked with stopping migration flow from the lower Western African countries up through Niger? No, we did not discuss operational issues regarding the G5 Sahel force. Um, it continues to be a, 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 a work in progress. Um, there will be further consultations at headquarters between DPKO and DPA, in fact, uh, tomorrow, uh, to understand exactly the role of uh, headquarters, uh, MINUSMA in Mali, my office, uh, how we work within the confines of the uh, Security Council resolution to support this very welcome initiative on the part of the countries themselves who want to undertake uh, uh, joint efforts to face the threat of terrorist uh, and violent extremist groups uh, in the Sahel. So it didn't come up, the G5 force topic didn't come up in the closed session? Not in the context of operational issues. What, we'll what, context, what context? Yeah, was in the discussed. context of uh, my briefing, uh, Security Council, that we have taken note of the resolution. The headquarters is uh, uh, already organizing itself in liaison with MINUSMA in Mali, my office uh, in Dakar, and covering the region to see uh, what concrete uh, further support that the UN can provide. Uh, and particularly also, how do we work with them to mobilize the additional resources that they will require um, in order to operationalize the force. So headquarters will be in Sebare? Where are the headquarters going to be in Mali? Oh, no, those uh, details, uh, I mean, I, I'm not in a position to uh, discuss them, to tell you now. Uh, my colleague in Mali is working uh, closely with them and uh, they will come out with the, uh, the details of deployment. We're not there yet in terms of the exact details of deployment. I thought the headquarters were in Severe. The headquarters? The headquarters were Where? going to be in Severe, in central Mali. That, that may very well be the case, yes. But that, I mean, what I'm saying is that operational details were not the subject of these discussions. Yes, sir. Thanks, Father. I wanted to ask uh, one question, direct, I think, directly in UNOWAS's work, and one that I'm not sure if it is, but I, I wanted to ask. One was just on Ghana. I remember back earlier this year, you issued this statement about the Delta Force raid on a court. What's your assessment of, of, of what's been happening in the country since then? The other one has to do with Cameroon. I know that, like, that seems to be under the office of Central Africa, but I see in your, in your briefing, it, it, inevitably, it, there, there's, you know, the, the mixed commission of Nigeria, Cameroon. There's been these killings in Bakasi. What, can you, I guess, can you say, to what degree does your office's work deal with Cameroon? And I'm thinking of the Anglophone regions, which may, may and, and, and is it your office that's working on this issue of the Nigerians that were allegedly killed in, in, in Bakasi, and, and what's the status of that? Thanks. Yes. Um, on, the, on the Delta Force, uh, you recall as, uh, rightly that um, both myself and the UN resident coordinator uh, came out very strongly uh, to condemn that action and to call on the government to make sure that uh, appropriate uh, measures were taken to bring to book uh, those who perpetrated that act. We still stand by that and uh, we uh, have been demarching the government, uh, particularly uh, following up on the promise of the Minister of Justice, the Attorney General, to say that although initially a court had uh, uh, discharged the perpetrators, uh, that the Attorney General, the Minister of Justice, intended to follow up and to bring new charges against them. I mean, violating the sanctity of a court of justice is a serious offense, 
and those who are engaged in that should not be left unpunished. Now, regarding Senegal, uh, uh, Cameroon, Cameroon, I should point out that Cameroon is in the Central Africa region of Africa. And my colleague in, like, in uh, Libreville, Gabon, in charge of the uh, you know car as in Central Africa, has responsibility for matters internal to Cameroon. My mandate is very much restricted to the border demarcation uh, project. Uh, issues of displacement and persons moving up across the border, if they are refugees, if they, are, uh, they become internally displaced, will fall under the ambit of UNHCR, as I just explained to your colleague here. And we hope that if there have been such movements, that uh, UNHCR will follow up to know the exact numbers, etc. I have just commended the government of Nigeria because Vice President Osimbanjo has directed that the Nigerian National Emergency uh, Authority uh, take up to find out what numbers have come across. Do they need help? If they do, that assistance should be provided. That the state level, this is in Cross River State, authorities should also uh, ascertain numbers involved and uh, provide the necessary support. So I think adequate res uh, an ad adequate response has been undertaken by Nigeria's side to cater to any Nigerians who might have uh, come back into the country from, back from Bakasi. Did you see this thing where Nigeria supposed has demarched the Cameroonians about, about what happened in Bakasi? They claimed that 97 people were killed. There was the imposition of a motorboat tax. It was kind of a big story. Well, there was the story, and when it happens, you always have to ascertain the veracity of it, um, and I think that is what is happening. Otherwise, the relations between the two countries remain very good, and we, we commend that, and, uh, yeah, and also we encourage their continuing collaboration on a bigger ticket item, the fight against Boko Haram, and we urge them to maintain this uh, solidarity that they have with each other and to scale up the fight against Boko Haram, which is wounded, but it's not dead yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.